All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, you know, I just posted my uh, another one of those uh, Nintendo perusing the Nintendo issues, and uh, like I said in that video, I wanted to do a updated um, updated thoughts on Xenoblade, this game right here, because this game is so friggin' massive that uh, I'm 50 hours in. And I don't even know if I'm through the middle yet. Uh, <laughs> that's the thing. Like I keep, I keep thinking about you know how huge these environments are, and I keep thinking to myself, by God, I'm not even off the Bionis yet. I haven't crossed Sword Valley, and I don't even know if you get to explore the Maconis. But if you get to explore the Maconis, then just you know, by theory. I'm not even halfway through the game yet. So, 50 hours in, I thought I would do an updated thoughts on Xenoblade because, um, you know, after having played it for, you know, 40 more hours than my early impressions video, I feel like uh, there's a few things that I do take issue with this game. It's by no means a perfect game. Um, but when you really kind of step back and take a look at everything that Monolith Soft and Nintendo has brought to the uh, the forefront with this game, it, it, you kind of let those nitpicking things um, disappear. And, uh, you know, I, I'm playing it now. I currently have the game paused uh, on the Wii menu because, I, you know, I was making it and I was like, you know what, the camera is fully charged now. Let's go ahead and shoot this video before it gets too late and I can start uploading it. So, um... The first video that I did of these um, is, you know, it was kind of a, a gushing video. So uh, with this video, what I really want to do is sort of uh, talk about some things that in the game that I think aren't so great. Because, you know, by and large, I think this is one of the greatest games of this generation. It's most definitely the best game on the Wii. Um... It is most definitely my favorite RPG this generation, which I have a few uh, of this generation that I still need to play. So that, that's let's just get that out there right now. I haven't played every RPG this generation. But of the ones I've played this generation, this is my favorite so far. Um, but, you know, favorite overall game, uh, I'd really have to sit back and think about that. But it's damn close. Um, but there are some things that I have an issue with in this game. And the biggest issue of this game is kind of one of the most surprising things. Um, because it's something that I often overlook in other JRPGs. And that's a bestiary. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many RPGs you know I have on all these shelves that have a bestiary in them. And I never use them. Never. Never once have I used the bestiary in a video game. Uh, Xenoblade is the exception to the rule. It desperately needs a bestiary. Because here's the problem. This game, uh, you can play through the main storyline and have the main storyline done, and I don't know, maybe like 40, 50 hours. You could be done by now, you know. Uh, the problem with the game is there is... A massive, massive amount of side quests to do in this game, and I want to do them. So, uh, one of the big side quests in this game is hunting down and killing a certain amount of different monsters that roam the various parts of the Bionis, and possibly the Maconis if I ever get to it. Uh, so, here's the problem you'll get a quest from a person. And they'll tell you to go out and kill five of such and such. Fair enough. Okay. You set out on the Bionis to kill five such and suches. Here is the main problem. Every environment I have gone to in this game so far, including towns, is huge. Okay? And I'm used to big games. I've played the Fallouts. I've played Skyrim. You know, we're we're kind of used to these big open worlds in these games. You know, uh, Grand Theft Autos and stuff like that. I would venture a guess that Xenoblade is bigger than Skyrim. 
I would venture a guess at that because this game is massive and every place you go to is huge. So if you had a bestiary to tell you where these individual monsters were, that would just expedite the quest so much faster. As it is, uh, a lot of the times I can remember where the monsters are at in certain environments. Um, but to have that bestiary there to go into like your journal and look at the bestiary and say, oh, those are over on this island in this, you know, that would just make things so much easier. I understand why the bestiary is not there. Because trust me, guys, when I tell you that this disc, this little Wii optic disc, which I don't even off the top of my head know how much information it stores. I think it stores as much as a DVD. This thing is packed to the gills with data. Honest to God, I, I don't know how this game is running on the Wii. And I don't know how it's not running at like a lower frame rate than it is because it's a marvel what this game is. We'll talk about the graphics and everything a little bit later. But uh, a bestiary would have been, it's almost mandatory for this game. Uh, that being said, you can still complete the side quest, you know, easily. It's just going to take you more time. So, you know, for you people out there who haven't made a decision on Xenoblade, this is what I'm going to tell you. If you just want to play the storyline, you can probably beat it pretty quick. If you want to see everything this game has to offer, this game is going to take 100 plus hours. So if you don't like long games, I hate to tell you not to buy the game, but if you don't like long games, uh, this is a huge game. Okay? So a bestiary. Number one thing that I have a problem with this game is it needs a bestiary. Okay. Number two. Uh, the journal. The journal could be a little bit better. And what I mean by that is it tells you, you know, what quests you have to do and what quests are completed. I'm fine there. The problem I have with the journal is, is a lot of these quests, like I said with the monsters, you have to beat five of such and such. And such. Uh, another thing is you have to collect five such and such items, you know, like varying degrees of items. So the way the journal could be better is telling you how many uh, enemies you've beat or how many items you've collected. That is a no-brainer, I feel like. I feel like that should really been in implemented because here's what you have to do. Um, as you collect items and beat monsters, it'll update you on the screen, like how many, you know, four of five or three of six or something like that that you've uh, completed. The problem is when you're not fighting these monsters, uh, the game doesn't tell you how many you still need to get. So... You know, you might think you're either really close to completing a quest or you're actually really far away from it. So just that little bit more of information would have been great to have because there's been so many times where like, am I close to beating this quest? And I have to go into the journal, see what item or monster I have to beat slash collect. If it's a monster, I'm screwed. I, mm, you know, there's no bestiary, so I'm screwed. If it was an item... I have to go into my item screen then and scour through all the items that I've collected, which in this game, you collect a massive amount of items. So you have to go through and find this item and see how many you have. And then if you don't remember what you read in the journal, then you have to go back to the journal and see how many you needed to collect. So, I mean, it's, it's not a game-breaking thing. These aren't game-breaking problems. It's just, it's... Just stuff that needs to be in there to help the gamer out a little bit. I'm not talking about, you know, making the game easier. I'm just talking about um, giving me a little bit more information, you know. So that is another problem uh, I have with the journal. My third problem and my final problem is with the in-game map itself. And I'm not talking about um, when you're running around the little mini map that's up in the top uh, right corner. I'm fine with that map. That map's A+. Plus. Uh, when you press the minus button, or the select button, and you go into the big menu, or the big uh, map, I should say, what I want out of that map is I want it to tell me, like, when I'm in a town, I want that red exclamation point. 
I'm okay with the white exclamation point being off that map because a white exclamation point means this person has a quest that you can accept, okay? A red exclamation point on the map means this is the person you need to talk to to end a quest. I am totally 100% fine with being blind on the white exclamation points. I should have to uh, explore the environment to find the quests. I'm okay with that. But when I complete a quest, and not all quests do this, some quests um, complete on their own, like the item collection quests. A lot of those complete on their own. You don't have to talk to anybody after it's done, it's just done, okay? But the, the, the times that I've had to go back into towns and search for this person to talk to in order to end the quest, it's added, I, I would guarantee it's added almost three hours onto my gameplay time, which is not a bad thing. I'm okay with that. The problem with this is, is like these towns are huge, huge. Um, just off the top of my head, the, um, the Nopin town, the, 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 the big tree, it's seven stories tall. And each story is no slouch. It's, it's a pretty big environment with a lot of people. And then you add into the fact that there's a night and day cycle and varying degrees of hours. I mean, it's a, it, when you've beat a quest and you have to go back and talk to somebody to end that quest, it's a huge ordeal. And it, it, it takes some scouring to find those people. So if the main map, the big map that you press select to, to bring up, just showed you those red exclamation points of where you need to talk to people to end quests would have been just a massive, uh, a massive plus, a massive boon to the game. It would have allowed you to get those quests done with, get the experience points, and get on your way. Um, so those are my three real problems with Xenoblade at this point. Other than that, guys, the game is mind-blowingly phenomenal. It is most definitely the best JRPG this generation. Uh, best RPG, JRPG ever? Uh, I don't want to go that far. But it's it would definitely crack my top ten. I really love this game. Um, the music, uh, I... I I've had the soundtrack for the longest time. Uh, you know, when the game got announced, you know, a little bit, whenever the soundtrack became available, I purchased it because I thought that was going to be the only Xenoblade um, merchandise I was ever going to get my hands on because Nintendo was being so stingy about it. The music is phenomenal, and I'm having so much fun seeing where those pieces that I've listened to for so long fit into the structure of the game. The graphics... Uh, for me, the graphics are amazing. For a lot of you guys out there, uh, the graphics are going to be a mixed bag. Here's the problem. Here's the reason why. Uh, of course, we all know the Wii is not HD. So we can't... I mean, that's just... That's that. The Wii is not HD. So you're not going to get HD graphics. The problem with the graphics is... Is that... It's really... Everything looks perfect from far away. When the characters are at a mid-level distance, they look gorgeous. When they get zoomed in for like uh, cutscenes and things like that, you're going to notice that the faces are really blurry because it looks like the textures are just kind of painted on and they use a lot of low-res textures. So when you're looking at it up close, it looks kind of crappy, but when it's at a medium-level distance, it looks really friggin' good. So a lot of people are going to have a problem with that. I don't, because I sit back and I look and I think about this, and I'm like, holy friggin' crap. These environments are so huge that, uh, honest to God, I don't even, I, I, it sucks, because I did not know the Wii was capable of this. And it sucks that this is the last year of the Wii, we're getting ready for the Wii U, or whatever they decide to name it, hopefully they change the name. And... We finally get to see what the Wii was capable of. And the Wii is capable of some amazing things. And it's unfortunate that it's all been, um, you know, mini games and casual games and the like. It's really capable of some amazing things. And this game is proof positive of that. Because, yes, it looks like a PS, a little bit better of a PS2 game. You know, but the environments are so huge and there's so much to do. There's so many side quests. It's a massive game. I haven't even got to how overwhelming the game is. I mean, 
the amount of stuff you can equip to your party members, and then you can equip gems on top of that to them. The amount, just the amount of customization you can have to your party. Uh, this game breaks the the current uh, JRPG mold in that you know everything's so insular. It's like you have so many options in this game that, honest to God, sometimes you don't know what to do. But I'm 50 hours in, and I'm just figuring out how to use the skill trees. You know? I mean, it, it's, it, it's a constant learning with this game. And uh, that's why I think it's really amazing. You know, so many games you can just put in, and within the first five hours, you have it lit. But uh, this is a game that is constantly showing me new things and constantly making me think about new things. Um, so I haven't even touched on the storyline yet. The storyline is getting a lot more uh, crazy than I thought it was. And I don't know why I, I thought the story was going to be such a, uh, such a simple thing. You know, you see all this stuff and you read about it and you, it's like Bionis versus Makonis. Okay. But there's so much more politics in that between, you know, the Halms and the Nopin and then the High Entia. It's just, I, I, I should have known better because Takahashi is making this and Xenoblade, or wait, this is Xenoblade. Um, too many Xeno games. Xeno Saga and Xeno Gears. I mean, both of those storylines go way off the rails. So, while things haven't got super crazy yet, I'm starting to see trickles of oh my god, this is going to get friggin' nuts. And I cannot wait. So, that's it, guys. I mean, I can't think of anything else I really have an issue with in this game. Um, I don't know how many of you guys out there... I have two obsessions with this game. One is to get the map completely uncovered, which is a huge thing because, you know, like I said in my first video, uh, I spent three hours in the first town and didn't even do anything storyline-wise. I was just, like, filling the map in, you know. Uh, the other big thing that I'm obsessed with is finding the highest peak I can, jumping off of it into water, and just seeing how long my character falls. I mean, when I say that these environments are huge, I just don't mean in this plane. I mean, like, that, too. Like, things are just so high up in the air, and when you get up there and you look off the cliff and you see water underneath, you're like, I don't even care if I have to backtrack. I'm fucking jumping off this cliff. And you do it. You just sit there for like 30 to 40 seconds going, am I ever going to hit the water? You know, Skyrim is a big game. But I think Xenoblade might be bigger. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the specs and like the geometry of the, the environments and stuff. But uh, I would venture to guess that Xenoblade is a bigger game than Skyrim. Let the flame wars begin, you know. Uh, so, yeah, guys, I don't know what to say. If you guys have a Wii and you like RPGs, JRPGs, Xenoblade is a no-brainer. If you guys don't have a Wii but you like JRPGs, it's worth going to GameStop, trying to find a copy, because I tell you what, guys, this is going to be a rare game. Uh, you know, once the Wii U gets in full swing... And that, that thing's backward compatible with the Wii. People are going to want Xenoblade. So go out and get it now. Because if you don't get it now, it's going to be hard to find and expensive. Um, so if you don't have a Wii, I would either tell you to do one of two things. One, just go out and buy the game. If you like JRPGs, go out and buy the game. If you don't have a Wii and you don't want a Wii, hold on to it. Because you'll probably get a Wii U. Okay? Backwards compatible. Boom. If you want a Wii to experience some of the other games that are out there for the Wii, because the Wii is actually a great system. Um, it's kind of an underdog system like the Dreamcast was of its era. Uh, then go buy a used Wii for cheap. Boom. Do that. It's, I mean, it's a system seller. It really is, because it's, it, it, it's one of, if not the best game this generation. It's just amazing what they did with this game. Uh, if you have no interest in JRPGs, why are you watching this video? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, guys, I I'm telling you what, I am just thoroughly impressed with Xenoblade. Like, it's, I had such high, I mean, you know, being a member of Operation Rainfall, uh, following this game for the, the amount of years, I just had unbelievable hype for this game. 
And, you know, I've, I've hyped myself out of so many things. I've hyped myself out of Episode 3 of Star Wars. Uh, I almost did it with Star Trek, the new Star Trek movie. But that thing just blew it out of the water. If you guys like sci-fi, go fucking watch the new Star Trek movie. It's amazing. Um, but, you know, so many things I've, I've kind of ruined with hype. Xenoblade has met that hype and exceeded it a little bit. Like, I, uh, when you see it in motion and you are playing it and you see these environments and you're like, holy crap, I can go way off in the distance there. Because, you know, pretty much anywhere you can see, you can go. It's just astounding what they did with this. And the, the mere fact that it's right on the Wii is even more astounding. So that's pretty much it that I have for this video. Um, I don't know what's going to come next. I don't know whether... Here's my plan. Let's put it this way. I'm 50 hours in. If I get to 100 hours, I'll make another video on Xenoblade. Maybe give some more thoughts on it. Might not be as long as this one. Or... If I beat the game before that, then I'll do my final discussion on it. But either way, you're at least you're at least going to get one more video out of Xenoblade. You might get two because honestly, this has been like the most anticipated game that I've looked forward to in a long long time. Like I can't even remember the last time I was this excited about a game. Um I'm quickly scanning my collection to see it might be Dragon Quest 8. That was the last time that I really was this excited about a game. Um, Dragon Quest VIII, PlayStation 2, 2006 or 2005. I can't remember. But either way, long friggin' time ago. So I'm really excited about this game, and uh, I really want to cover it, you know, as much as I can. Give my give my unique perspective on it, and uh, so at least one video, possibly two. So there's that. Um, one more thing I want to address before this video is done. Um, there has been a huge influx of new subscribers, and I kind of want to address the new subscribers here, because, um, I'm not super versed in YouTube, okay? But, uh, YouTube in my inbox is how I, what I use to communicate with you guys out there. It does not tell me when you subscribe. I know a lot of people out there, whenever they get a new subscription, they always go to the person's page and type, thanks for subscribing. Um, because YouTube doesn't tell me that, and it goes to my email, specifically my email's junk folder, because I get so many uh, YouTube uh, emails, um, I really primarily use my uh, YouTube inbox to uh, communicate with you guys. So if that inbox does not tell me things I don't know so to the new subscribers um, thank you so much for subscribing to me uh, when I started this channel in September of last year I never thought I would have broken you know 200 subscribers I know to a lot of people that's nothing but to me it really is um, really is quite amazing that 200 people out there well 200 plus people it's like 213 the last time I looked um, like to listen to me ramble because most of the time I don't even like to listen to myself talk so the mere fact that you guys um, have subscribed and you watch and a lot of you guys out there uh, really engage um, on this channel and I, I that's what I wanted I wanted to have discussions with people about games so to the new subscribers thank you so much for seeing something in this channel that you want to continue watching to my old subscribers Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the kind words and my personal messages and the kind words in my comments. You guys don't know how much that means to me. Um, I was really apprehensive about starting this channel, and all of you guys have made this channel worthwhile. So thank you so much. I hope to continue bringing you guys content that you guys like watching. Um, I hope to keep things fresh. hope to not to fall into some kind of pattern. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Hopefully I keep things coming for you guys that you keep, guys keep enjoying. Uh, to all my friends that uh, on YouTube, keep making your videos. I love watching them. Um, I, you know, they constantly give me inspiration to do different videos uh, or video responses. So um, this has been quite possibly one of the, the greatest experiences uh, of my life, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but it's also very true because 
Uh, I got to meet all of you guys, and that's an amazing thing. Power of the internet. Hoorah. I don't know why I did that. I'm not a Marine. I shouldn't have done that. That's their thing. <laughs> but anyway, guys, uh, that is it for me. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time.